Good morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So um, it's 913 and <clears throat> I forgot to mention yesterday that um, if you're watching this later in the day, you can go ahead to probably uh, the five minute mark or so because I'm going to be starting in a few, a couple of minutes and you can skip my waiting for people to tune in. So it is St. Patrick's Day. My name is Erin Riley and Erin means Ireland in Gaelic. So um, it's a big day for me. My studio is green. I'm wearing all green. I've got my Kanishmi, I'm Irish and I've got a little uh, pin that says Erin Go Bra, which means Ireland forever. So I'm all in and I hope you are too. Um, I'm going to be playing some music today, unlike yesterday, because I want to try having some Irish music playing. So hopefully that'll work out. And that way we can compare how you all like having um, some music playing in the studio or just in your own homes. And this is my studio here in my house in Wellesley, Massachusetts on this snowy St. Patrick's Day. So we'll start in about one minute and <clears throat> just try to get things set up properly in the meanwhile. So one more minute. Welcome. I hope everyone's doing okay. It's getting a little crazier every day, isn't it? Let's put on some music. I found a playlist on Spotify called Irish Instrumental Calm. So if you feel like continuing to listen to something like this throughout the day, you can do the same. Okay. All right, it is now 9.15. Welcome, everyone. So, happy St. Patrick's Day. This is my studio in my house in Wellesley, and I figured since it was a kind of a gray, snowy day, I would try having us uh, looking out toward the pond for a little bit while I give my little spiel, rather than staring at me. So, welcome. The snow is changing to rain. Hope everyone is enjoying their morning. Um, so we're going to do some yoga this morning. Uh, again, it's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone from Aaron Riley. And I'm playing a little bit of Irish music in the studio today. So maybe you um, are not going to be playing music in your own home this morning. I'd like you to gather if you have a couple of blocks or anything like it, if you're going to need those. Um, I think we will be using a strap today if you have that. If you don't have anything like a strap, you can use an old tie or some uh, a, a towel or something like that. Um, also, if you have an eye pillow for the final relaxation to put over your eyes, if you don't, you can just use a small hand towel and then either a blanket or a sheet or maybe a big beach towel to cover you at the end when you're doing the relaxation. And finally, if you have anything, a couple of cushions or something like that that you could use to put under your legs um, for the final relaxation, that kind of makes it nicer as well. So I think that is the end of things that I need to say as far as preparation. So now I'm going to take the camera back and we're going to begin. I um, appreciate everybody tuning in yesterday and hopefully this will work again today. It's all new to me. Okay. Here we go. Again, sorry for the delay here. Okay, I think we're good to go. I promise as the days go by, I will get better and better. At least I hope. Okay, so welcome everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Kanishmi, I'm Irish. Um, uh, another thing I would love to say is that if you 
um, want to do any comments. At the end of class, I would love to hear back things that um, you think are working well for you, things that aren't working well for you, things that would make it a better fit for your family. When I'm teaching yoga in the space, I'm constantly interacting with my students and watching and seeing, and um, of course, I don't have that with you all. So I would love to hear if there's something that um, I can do to make this better serve you. So thank you very much. Okay, so today <clears throat> we're gonna start just sitting down. I'm gonna use my trusty block again to sit on. You can have <clears throat> sitting cross-legged or in the bound angle pose again, however you like. So let's just start with a little bit of calming down. I will admit, like I said yesterday, I was a little nervous. Today, the way I'm feeling is a little bit like foreboding. Um, I hope I'm not instilling anything in you guys that you're not already feeling, but I heard someone uh, uh, on the radio this morning, the, the head of NPR saying, you know, we're gonna be here for you in these trying times and it's a once in a generation thing. And I started to feel a lot of emotion welling up in me. And um, you know, what do you do with that? So something you can do with that is certainly not stuff it down, let it come up and out. And maybe that's what happens with all of us this morning here um, on your mat or on your beach towel or whatever it is you're using. Um, okay, so take a big breath in and let it go. And now we're gonna move to the breath. So you can just let your fingertips relax on the floor for a moment, let your shoulders be heavy, and then just feel like the top of your head is really light, floating up, breathing. And just notice when you need to inhale, and then when you need to exhale. And what you're gonna do is the next time you need to inhale, just lift your arms up at the same time. And when you feel the need to exhale, just let your arms float down in time with that movement of your breath. And just keep doing that a few more times. I mentioned yesterday that one good thing to do is to notice when you're doing yoga or any other activity, what effect it has on you. So we're just gonna do this a couple times, then we're gonna stop for a second and just check in and see if just doing this for just a couple of seconds, not even a whole minute, you feel different. I feel different already, so hopefully you do too. Uh, <clears throat> let's take the hands up one more time, bring them down on the center line and pause at your heart. Feel your breath rising and falling underneath your thumbs. And today on St. Patrick's Day, they talk about the luck of the Irish. So one thing that I would like to work with today is the idea of being lucky. And I would have to start by saying that anybody who has, for example, access to the internet is lucky. So just that common baseline, we're all here together virtually on the internet. We are very lucky people. We are lucky to hopefully be surrounded by people we love and if that's not the case for you, then maybe you're separated from those you love and that's rough, but um, I hope that we can provide some community for that. So just thinking about the ways that you're lucky in the midst of all of this, I know it all seems like everything terrible is happening, but there are so many ways that we're fortunate. So let's all be Irish today and feel the luck of the Irish. Great, okay, so let's come onto our hands and knees. And again, if you want any extra cushioning under your knees, you can bring a little bit under the edge of your mat. I mentioned to people yesterday that I've got a circular mat, but yours will just be your rectangle facing the short end of the mat. Okay, so we're just gonna do your classic cat and cow. And if you were working with um, some small kids in the room, or, or if you are a kid at heart, feel free, again, when you're in your own home, you can be a little crazier and noisier than you would be in a regular yoga studio. So feel free to make some cat sounds and cow sounds. So this pose is called cow pose. And, you know, feel free to move. It, it resonates in your chest. Even the adults will feel that resonating. So, mm, okay, I feel foolish. And then cat, you might want to hiss. Or maybe not, whatever you want to do. Moving back and forth between those poses. Have fun with it. So feel your spine moving. Feel how lucky you are to be able to move like this. 
And then one of these times when you're in your cow pose with your head lifted, tuck your toes under, and now you're going to turn into a different animal, the dog. Feel free to make any kind of dog sounds if you want. Wag your tail around. And again, you don't have to be a little kid to have some fun imagining that your body is inhibited, inhabited by a different kind of creature. So let that happen. So downward dog. And now let's all take child's pose. We all can relate to being children. So let your forehead rest on the floor, arms back by your legs or out in front. The way you're going to decide is if you want a more opening in your upper back, you'll put your arms by your side and let them be heavily toward the floor. If you want to have a little more length in your side body, you can bring your arms out in front. You can try both of them. So again, child's pose, as I mentioned yesterday, is going to be your place of retreat, your place of wisdom. I like to call it wisdom pose so that you um, are the sage wise teacher, not a child at all. This is not a baby pose. This is not something where, oh, I'm giving up. This is the place where you come when you say, oh, I'm a smart person and I know what I need. And I'm going to give myself that. Okay. So now you're going to take your arms out in front if they're not there. Come back up onto your hands and knees and back to dog. Again, feel free to bark or howl and be a dog. Now you're going to lift your right leg high. Three-legged dog, if you like, or you can keep your legs still on the floor. Whenever you're ready, you'll bring your right foot up to the front. As I mentioned yesterday, a great way to make that happen is to let your left knee come down, right foot coming around in front, and then taking the back knee high. So extending your leg back, extending your shin forward, breathing here. One thing I love to do is take the fingertips out wider, so kind of to the edge of your mat, and make small circles. If you are not so comfortable with your hands on the floor and you have blocks or something like them, you can use the blocks to come a little higher, give yourself a little more space in your hip area. So whatever you're doing, circling around in both directions, breathing, and then stop the motion, bring your hands back underneath your shoulders so you can come up to the front of your mat, bringing your back foot up to the front. Either fingertips on the floor or wherever they're gonna go, maybe on blocks, Enjoying a stretch in the backs of your legs. Again, thinking about some way that life is really, really good for you. Let's stand up next time you're breathing in. So you always want to wait until your need to inhale happens before you move. And when you're needing to exhale, bring your hands all the way down the center. And back up and out. Filling up with air. And then again, bring your fingertips down to the floor. Take your right foot back. Again, and hop your toes out to the right side of your mat. We're going to take warrior one. And so I'd like you to be, I'll show you this angle, where your feet, I have a line on the middle of my mat, and so my foot in the front is to one side, and, and my foot in the back is over to the right side of the mat, or the right side of the line. And then I'm going to come up, putting my back heel down. So with warrior one, you want to have your hips and your shoulders facing forward as much as possible. I'm pressing into my back foot, coming forward, and arms lifting overhead if that's comfortable for you. So I'll show you from this angle again. So warrior one, maybe taking a nice deep bend in the front knee if you're wanting to challenge yourself that way, trying to keep your torso vertical. Breathing here. And then you'll pivot Back onto your toes in the back and come forward for warrior three. Yesterday we did this in eagle arm. This time we're going to do it a little more simply. You can keep your arms out in front or, again, using your imagination, take your arms back and become an airplane. So none of us are flying anywhere anytime soon. So use your imagination. Where would you like to go? Go there in your mind. And then you'll reach your foot all the way back. Stay up on your toes, circle your arms up and around, and plant your hands down to the floor again. Drag your left foot back to downward dog. Become the dog. Shake your head out. Maybe you had a dog roaming around you while you're practicing yoga this morning. I have two dogs. One of them is named Guinness. He's an Irish terrier, so this is his day. He's out walking right now. 
All right, so let's come forward to high plank pose. Walk your toes back so your wrists feel nice and comfortable. You're not with your shoulders ahead of your wrist, stressing your inner wrist joint. Breathing here. Anytime you like, you can put your knees on the floor, but try to keep the challenge in your belly as you're doing that. So you can still keep the line from your knees up to your torso, feeling your belly still working here. And when you feel like you're starting to sag, that's your cue to allow yourself to come to the floor. Great. So as always, if you're someone who practices upward dog, you want to start in it right away. You can be here in upward dog, standing on your hands. You can be staying low in cobra using just your back muscles or apply your hands to the floor and add on some strength in your arms to lift into a deeper back bend. So do what's right for what you need to have happen this morning. Lowering down from wherever you are. If you're in upward dog, you can just go right back to downward dog. And the rest of us will make our way back in the way it works. Settle in for a breath or two here. So you're going to stay where you are. Lift your left foot up. I'm going to pivot around so you can see the other side. And lift my left foot high. So you might be bringing your left foot forward from here. Or again, let the right knee come down. Left foot comes around and coming up. Oh, I did it the wrong way. Sorry, right foot high. And letting, so now, sorry about that. The right foot's going to come in front and let your left heel come down. So you, again, you want to have that little bit of distance from side to side. Walk your front foot over to the pinky toe side if that works well for you. Pressing your back foot into the floor, peeling your left hip forward, hip, shoulders, and hips squaring to the front of the mat as much as you can. And then let your arms lift up. Breathing here in Warrior One. Playing around with how deeply you're bending the front leg. And trying not to just dump all your weight into the front leg. Keep lifting tall. Good. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Once again, thinking about something good. Some way that you're lucky today. I feel lucky to be able to be sharing this with you. Let's pivot onto the back toes so your kneecap is facing down again. And I like to spread out my front toes as much as I can before I balance on my foot. So coming forward, either staying with the three-legged dog or, or your three with your arms out in front, or turning yourself into an airplane, soaring high above the ground, going somewhere fun in your imagination. And then bend your knee, bring your back foot all the way to the back, arms lifting up and around. And once again, hands to the floor, right foot back, down the dog. So whenever you're in downward dog, especially if we're holding it for a few breaths as we are now, child's pose is a nice option. Especially if your arms are feeling tired or your wrists are feeling a little uh, tender from the, or your, the, the downward dog. Let's join together in downward dog. Breathe in here. And now we'll bring the left foot to the front. So take your left foot high. Coming forward with your left foot. Good. And then let your heel come down in the back. Coming up with both legs straight. So reach your fingertips out away from each other. And <clears throat> yesterday I talked a little bit about the alignment of your front knee and warrior two. We're going to play with that a little bit again today. So let's take the left hand to the outside of your left thigh. And bend your knee. Pressing your knee. I'm going to show you from the front. Bend your knee. Pressing your knee into your hand. So I'm pressing my knee over toward the pinky toe side. Okay, so you're using your left hand as a little guide. And we're gonna just lower down, bring your knee straight ahead, and rise it back up on your inhale. If you want, you can extend your arm out as you go down, lift it up as you rise. Exhaling to lower, inhaling to rise. Last time, exhaling to lower. So now hopefully your knee is pointing straight ahead. You can let go of that little alignment guide you've created there and take regular warrior two. You might be super low, you might be up here. Just do what's good for you today. So yesterday we did regular triangle pose. Today we're gonna play around with the rotated triangle. I'm gonna spin around to the front again. So for rotated triangle, straighten up both legs. 
And we're gonna take that wide balance beam again, like railroad tracks. Hop your back foot out to the side and forward a little bit. So see how I've got distance between my feet? Again, this line here, I've got a little bit of space uh, to either side of that line with my feet. And my feet are not super far apart from each other, maybe three or four feet apart. Great. So again, if you have a block, a lot of times people enjoy using a block for this pose. And you're going to tip forward, keeping both legs straight. The right hand stays on the block. That might get the highest height, lowest height, pick a right height for you, or maybe on the floor. That allows you to keep your left leg straight, the front leg straight. Then your hand will go to your hip, and you can start to twist. So my right hand is down. I'm starting to drop my right shoulder, lift my left side body up toward the ceiling, and I can keep my hand on my hip or let my arm reach up, rotated triangle. So a lot of people do regular triangle in classes, but it's important to do this rotated version too because you're stretching the outer thigh. When you're doing regular triangle pose, you're stretching the inner thigh, and your knee joint, you can stay in the pose, your knee joint is all connected in with that. So if you have a lot of length in your inner thigh and it's tight on your outer thigh, your knee is gonna to start to feel the effects of that. So you wanna keep things balanced. So we're practicing the rotated version of the triangle. Great. And then let your upper arm come down, move the block out of the way, and we'll come to the front of the mat for a moment. Take a breath in and exhale to a forward fold that feels good for you. Again, if you have blocks, that can happen up on blocks or down low. Finding a space in your back of your legs Sometime when you're ready to breathe in, stand up tall as you breathe in. Find the good thing, the lucky thing, become aware of it as you track your hands down the center and then opening up again. And let's fold over and we'll do rotated triangle. Uh, we'll do the whole warrior two and everything in rotated triangle on this side now. So step your left foot to the back and let your, uh, pop your toes out to the side, just let your heel come down. Coming up, warrior two. So you're in the warrior two. Again, the right hand is going to come to the outside of the knee. There we go. Outside of your knee, pressing in and rising up, inhaling, exhaling to lower down into the pose. Knee coming straight ahead, inhaling. And on your exhale, you lower down. Your inhale, you come up. So make sure you're moving with your breath and not just when I'm moving. And the next time you're down, stay down. Release the guide from the front and take regular warrior two. Breathing there. Good. And now we're going to take the rotated triangle. So straightening up your leg. Hopping the back foot out to the side and forward a little bit. So out to the side and then forward a little bit. Grab your block if you're going to use it. Now it stays under the left hand. So your right foot is out in front, left hand on something. Your right hand can go to your hip and you'll start to twist the other way. So your chest is going toward the leg in front. Dropping the left shoulder, lifting the right shoulder, keeping your hand where it is. We're taking it up, twisting, feeling the stretch on your outer Right thigh, most likely. Breathing here. Pressing your right foot into the floor, lifting away, twisting, breathing. And then you can let your upper hand come down to the floor, move the block out of the way. And once again, we'll move to the back of the mat to downward dog. So child's pose, wisdom pose is waiting for you. If that sounds like a nice work place to be right now, otherwise, We'll come forward to the high plank, and you can either be here breathing a few times, or as you breathe, making some motion along with it, maybe lowering close to the floor, building the upper body strength for arm balances, or maybe your knees are on the floor and you're doing little micro bends. Just make sure you're not holding your breath and certainly not grimacing in your face. Good. So hopefully you've got enough strength left in your arms to with control on the exhale, lower to the floor. And then you'll choose a front body opener. You're gonna do upward dog, cobra, 
maybe sphinx where you're on your forearms. Step out of the way. Oh, and I should mention that um, if you have some water, obviously anytime you like, you can take a little sip. So press your hands down into the floor, open your chest if you're choosing to do sphinx. And even if you're in cobra, you can still be pulling your shoulder blades and your elbows toward each other, opening across the front. So not just you. Maybe your dog is walking right underneath you. So just to be fair to the pet owners, let's take a cat pose again. Maybe you make a little tunnel for your cat to walk underneath you. I guess cat personalities vary a lot. Some of them will be very interactive with people who do yoga, and some get scared by the, mo the movement. I also have a cat who is elusive. So breathing into your back here, and sometime the next time you need to breathe in, turn yourself into a cow. Lifting your chin high. Breathing there. Great. And then bring your spine to a neutral position, back to becoming a dog. And then bring your right foot up into the front. And hop your toes out to the left side. Bring your heel down again. And we'll do warrior one again. So warrior one here. Pulling your shoulders and your hips even to the front. Breathing. Pivoting onto your back toes again. This time we're going to launch up into a in, uh, balance where you're also going to get into the hip opener. So you're going to come forward, leave your right knee as a shelf, kind of like we did an eagle yesterday. But this time, your foot's going to come over on top. I'll show you at this angle. So you're balancing with your ankle on top of your right thigh, sitting down as far as you can or want to. Your hands can come in front in prayer. You can reach out in front for a little counterbalance. And if you have the balance and you're feeling okay, you can start to hinge forward, dropping down, and you'll start to feel a little bit more in your left hip. If your left leg is on top, your left hip will start to feel a little something. If you are a person who does the arm balance from here, and if you're not, and you wanna come out, um, just come out of the pose right now, and you can just stand up tall for a moment in mountain pose. But if you like playing around with the arm balance, you're going to take your left shin and wedge it into your upper arms and then plant your hands on the floor. And just like we did yesterday in crow, regular crow, you can start to move weight onto your hands. I'm really actively flexing my left foot so that I'm holding on. And then if weight comes out of my back foot, then I can lift it up. Otherwise, you just keep your foot down and get a nice deep stretch. So wherever you went to in that pose, now you're going to come out. Maybe we're joining you in mountain pose. Lifting up. So once again, if you were able to do that pose, you might feel really lucky. And if you weren't able to do that pose, maybe you're feeling like, oh, you know, I'm not that good at yoga or whatever. That is not the point. <laughs> you're lucky to be able to breathe in and out and be here today. So don't worry if some of the poses I'm throwing at you are not yet yours or if they ever will be. So let's take the left foot back and the right foot back, lifting your hips high. We'll move through the vinyasa again, or you're taking a little rest in child pose. If you're with me in the vinyasa dog, and then moving back, exhaling, downward dog. Great. So breath or two here, and then we're going to meet with the left foot in front. So bringing your foot forward, or again, right knee down, bring your left foot around. Super. Right foot out to the side again. So you're on the fat balance beam, wide stance in the front. If you feel at all tippy, you'll walk your front foot over to the pinky toe side. Good. And fingertips lifting tall, pressing into your back foot, bringing the right side of your body now forward as your foot reaches back or your one. Couple of breaths here. So preparing your left leg now to support you. Pivot onto your back toes so you can hop forward, coming to the front here. And now with your left leg supporting you, your right ankle comes up and over. And we can play around with the different variations. So you're staying here, working with your breath, hands out in front, staying tall, 
Maybe you can hinge a little bit and you'll start to feel it in your outer right hip. Maybe you're going to the arm balance. So the left foot now is grabbing onto my left arm, hands coming out, I'm looking way out in front, just like in regular crow pose, and I start to shift weight into my hands. If the weight comes out of my foot, I pick my foot up. Otherwise, if there's any weight in my foot, I can just leave it there. So you, you do you, and then we'll come out, and we'll join the people who are perhaps already in mountain pose. We're lifting our hands up, bringing your hands down, and back up again. Great. And let's bring fingertips to the floor. Shake your head up and start to slowly stand up. Let your head reach down into your, your chin, reach down into your chest, feeling a stretch in the back of your neck. Coming up to stand. Great. And then you're going to be at the front of your mat with your feet about the width of your mat, maybe even a little bit off the mat. Let's get into stretching a little bit of the upper body. Take a little break from all the arm balance stuff. Arms lifting up overhead, filling up with air. I'm going to try to say the right thing so I'm mirroring. So if I get mixed up, I apologize. Press your right foot into the floor and tip over to, no, your left foot into the floor. Tip over to the right. So feeling the whole stretch on your left side of your body. You can hold on to your left hand with your right wrist and press even longer. Press even more into your left foot. And stretch on your side. You can stay like this or you can start to kind of let your chest go toward the floor a little bit and feel the stretch move onto your back. Bring it there. How lucky are we that we can breathe, right? You can let your chest go more toward the ceiling, let your arm go back, and then come to standing. Pause for just a moment here. And notice how your right or your left side body feels. It feels really uneven, doesn't it? So now let's do the other side. So you're going to press into your right foot, lift your hands up, and tip over to the left. Holding on to your right wrist with your left hand now, and lengthening, pressing your right foot into the floor. Breathing. So I don't want to bring people's attention back to the reason we're all here today. But one thing, if we're feeling lucky, you know, the thing that the COVID virus attacks is your breathing, your lungs. It's our connection to life, is our breath. So you can tip forward a little bit. You can go several days without food. You can go a little while without water. Come back now and let your chest go toward the ceiling. But you can't last very long at all without your breath. So appreciate this. And coming down. Hopefully you feel a little more even now. And bring your feet underneath you. Let's just kind of let loose a little bit here. And um, you're going to come up onto your toes. So again, don't look at me because I'm going to be moving. Stare at something in your space that's stable because we're going to come onto our toes and we might feel a little tippy. So you can take your hands overhead. Right onto your toes. And sometime when you're letting your breath go, let your whole body go too. And just flop down to the floor into a little squat. So filling up. Exhale. And then just like one of those crazy things that inflates in front of the car dealership, let your breath pull you back up, fill you all up so you're nice and tall. And then empty out the breath. And all the rigidity goes. We'll do that one more time. Rising up. Standing up tall. On your exhalation, dropping down. Great. Okay, so now let's take a squat position here. So you can keep your toes together. If you have issues with your knees, you're probably not going to want to do this, in which case I'm going to suggest that maybe you just spend a little bit of time with your legs crossed like this and coming forward because we're going to be opening up our backs. So if you have issues with your knees, you're going to do that. Otherwise, you can be here, and you can let your knees go wide. So this is kind of like the prep for um, crow pose that we did yesterday. This one is called garland pose, malasana. So I'm going to show it to you from a couple angles. One is here. You let your head drop down. If you want to, you can let your arms underneath. So I'll show you from the side as well. So my knees are wide. My toes are together. And I round down. And I'm trying to get 
my tailbone and the top of my head to the floor evenly. So I'm not way back here. I'm not tipping way forward if possible. And then the arms underneath goes like this, palms facing up. And your arms go underneath your shins. If your arms are out there like that, you might be able to settle back onto your heels. And you'll feel a big stretch in your back. And once again, focus on your breath. Notice that when you breathe in, your back stretches even more because your lungs are filling up. If you want to hold on to that breath for a little bit before you let it go, you'll notice a bigger stretch. Great. If your hands were behind you, bring them out in front and then come up a little bit. And we're going to join the people sitting down if you were one of those sitting down people. So we're sitting down now and we're going to just have the legs crossed. Let's start with the right foot in front. If you feel at all like you're rounding in your low back and it's not very comfortable for you to be able to sit up tall, you'll take a cushion. I've got these little cushions. And just tuck it underneath the back of your pelvis. So you go from rounded to sitting up tall because you're kind of falling off the edge of the cushion. Don't just sit up on top of the cushion and still have your rounded low back if possible. So you're using the cushion as a little aid to help you get a small arch in this direction in your low back. So that means that your pelvis will take a little twist. So you're on this way again. So reach your left hand back and twist around to the left, gazing over your shoulder, thinking about the crown of your head floating up as though it were a helium balloon and it's trying to get up to the ceiling. But your spine is the string that's keeping it grounded on the floor. Twisting around that long string of your balloon. At some point when you're letting your breath out, also undo the twist, pausing there. Let's switch the legs. I didn't say which side is in front, so just whatever you did before, I'm switching the other way. So now your right hand's going to reach around behind, and you'll twist over to the right. If that image of the balloon was helpful to you, you can conjure that again. Your head is full of helium. And your spine is the string. Anchor to the floor. Breathing in. Breathing out. And then undoing the twist. Great. If you have a cushion underneath you, um, actually leave it there if you're using the cushion. Because we're going to take the legs out end of your mat. If you have a wide enough straddle, you might be able to get your hips and your heels cushioned on the mat. But um, just make yourself comfortable. You might be looking more like this, in which case you're going to want to use the cushion to kind of prop yourself up. And here's a pose that if you're in a room with another person, you can have a little bit of fun by sitting facing each other, putting your feet, touching each other, and then you can reach across and try to hold hands. And then you've got to talk to each other so you don't hurt each other. But one of you will move back, encouraging the other forward, and then you can trade off that. So you just get a little assist into the um, straddle pose. So whether you're working with a partner or just on your own, you're going to start to tip forward. So I mentioned several times yesterday that a lot of people, they look at pictures of yoga and they think that something in particular is supposed to happen. Like I'm supposed to have my head on the floor or my hands are supposed to be in a certain place. Really, the point of this pose is to stretch your legs. Your muscles in your legs are attached to your pelvis. They're not attached to your upper body at all. So really, all you have to do to get the, the stretch that we're looking for in this pose is feel your frontal hip bones. And if those can start tipping toward the floor, that's when you'll feel the stretch. So don't worry so much about your upper body yet. So you can even keep your fingers there and start to tip forward. Some people will have like a little tiny microscopic movement, which is fine. Others will be able to tip a lot further with a long spine. So go wherever you can go, just moving your pelvis. And then you can either stay like that, pressing the backs of your legs into the floor, or if you want to get the stretch in your upper body, then you can round down. But you've already gotten as much as you can out of the leg stretch by tipping your pelvis forward. So working wherever is gonna be good for you. We're gonna stay here for a few breaths. So if you want to, my blocks are way over there, and I should have warned you beforehand that maybe we would be using blocks, but you might support your forehead on something, or if you have a stool and you're higher up, 
can be here. So just feel the inner thighs opening up, maybe in there. And in a moment or two, we're going to take another kind of twist here. And for a lot of people, this is a little confusing, so you might want to watch first. So what we're going to do is you're going to reach across. So this is a better angle. You're going to reach around with your left hand, reach across with your right hand, and look over your left shoulder. So you're in this twist here, kind of like what we just did with our legs crossed. But now, that leg over there, your right leg that you can't see, you're going to tip over toward that. So you start tipping over toward the leg you can't see. Your left hand comes off the floor and reaches up and over. So some people will be just at a small angle like this. Others will be able to go all the way down and maybe even hold onto your foot. If you can hold onto your foot, you can try pressing your foot away and you get more of a stretch on your side body. However, all of us, no matter where you are, are gonna be thinking about your left hip going down toward the floor as your fingers go over to the other side. So feeling that stretch, again, if you're quite far down, you can think about your right shoulder coming in front of your leg. So it takes a lot of effort to get into this pose, so we'll stay for a couple more breaths. Unless you're done already, you can come out, of course. So when you are ready, when a breath is happening, use it to lift up, go back to the twist, on in there, and undoing. Great, so let's try the other side. So now you're going to reach around with your right hand to the back. Your left hand comes across to your other leg. And looking over your shoulder. So now it's the left leg that you can't see back there. And you're going to tip over toward that. So I call this the little teapot pose. You know, the I'm a little teapot, short and stout. So we're tipping over, pouring out the tea. Again, if you have your foot, you can press your foot into your hand, getting a deeper stretch. And if the idea of your hand being anywhere near your foot is just unimaginable to you, that's totally fine. You're still getting wonderful benefits being up here, hopefully anyway. We're pouring out your tea here on St. Patrick's Day. Some Irish tea with some milk in it. I already had some in my mug that says herself on it. So wherever you are, the next inhale, coming up, going back to the twist for a moment. So for my body, doing this twisting gives me a little extra stretch on each side. So we're going to explore the forward fold in the twist again and see if it made any difference for you. Once again, bring your attention to your frontal hip bones, thinking about the pelvis tipping, not caring so much about getting your head to the floor or anything, just your pelvis tipping. See if you feel any more mobility in your forward fold in the straddle position now. And then at any point you like, you can round, you can support your head on something, if something's nearby, it's stacked, enjoying this time. And once again, you might be thinking about something that is good in your life amidst all of the challenges. Feeling lucky, the luck of the Irish on the St. Patrick's Day. One more big breath in, maybe holding it, let it go through your mouth. And come on up. So now I'd like you to take your hands onto the insides of your knees because we've been spending a lot of time with this all stretched out. So use your arm strength to help you bring your legs together. Great. And let's do another bound angle pose. We did it again yesterday, or we did it yesterday, but um, let's try it again today. So I'm going to sit up on the block here because in this pose, I am one of the people that is not, it's a lot of work for me to sit up tall. I can't be relaxed here. So I sit on the block or you can sit on a small cushion. And I sit right off the edge of it. So my sit bones come off the edge and I go from a rounded low back to the natural curve in my low back. And then you can just let your legs relax down, sitting tall. So as we just allow your, the legs to relax, let's explore the notion of good posture as long as I'm sitting in this direction. So we spend so much time these days like this, right? We're on a laptop, we're staring at a phone, some people driving in a car. So what, what I always try to tell myself is 
create a nice tall spine. So try to get your, your pelvis in that position where the natural curves of the spine can happen. So your spine is like a Jenga game. Maybe some of you are going to be playing Jenga today to, to while away some hours. So Jenga, you're stacking up all the blocks on top of each other. But those blocks are all rectangles or rectilinear. Your spine has all kinds of different angles to it. And if you get the base of it right, then it all just stacks up and your, and your torso muscles can relax. So you, you got to get your pelvis in a position. You can just play around with tipping it. You'll notice if, if you're tipping back, you have to use your abdominal muscles. If you're tipping too far forward, you have to use your back muscles. So find a place where you feel like it can relax a little bit. So you create the, the perfect angle for your base, and then the rest of it can just stack up. And then the key thing is to balance your skull on top of that tall stack. And then whatever you're doing, as much as you can, try to have whatever you're looking at out in front of you with your body in this position. So I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you're looking at your phone as much as you can, hold your phone up here. If you're working on a computer, have the screen up here. If you're driving in the car, try to set up your um, seat so that when the rear view mirror, you can see through the rear view mirror, you're in this tall posture. And then you know, as soon as you start to slump, you can't see the rear window anymore through your rear view mirror. So that can be your little reminder. And then take your hands to the outsides of your knees, and use your arms again to bring your legs together. Great. So coming off the block if you were on one. And um, I'm going to go on to my back now, but if you are not familiar with bridge pose, then I'd like you to stay looking for just another moment or two so that you can see what we're doing. If you know bridge pose, then you can go onto your back. So you'll lie on your back, and your feet will be in this pose, in this position of your body. So move any ponytail out of the way, because you want your head to be able to relax on the floor without your neck getting strained. And you'll press into your feet, press the press your feet into the floor, and lift your hips up. So your hands can stay on the floor with the palms facing down at first to help you lift up. Then you'll turn your palms to face up. So you can lift up one shoulder, turn your palm, and tuck your shoulder blade in on one side and then the other. Maybe you hold on to a strap or clasp your hands under your back. And you can stay with a kind of a straight line from your knees to your shoulders if you like. That's a nice bridge. But the real point of bridge is to really undo all of that um, hunchy that I was talking about. So if you can, you're going to use the muscles on your upper back to lift your chest high and bring your breastbone, your chest bone, closer and closer to your chin with each breath if you can. So your hips stay lifted, your chest is coming forward toward your chin, breathing there. And notice when you take a big breath in how everything puffs out. I've got a shamrock on my shirt and I want to be making the shamrock bigger as I breathe in because my shirt is stretching with the breath. Great. And then move your hands out of the way and come down. So if those of you who are watching now can come onto your back, we're going to do this again. Um, and if you'd like to do the restorative version of the pose, then you have a block or something around this height to put underneath your hips when, um, when we get to that point, and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll do another bridge pose. Some of us are doing it for the first time. Again, press your low back into the floor. Keep that work going on as you lift up. Find your bridge pose. So people who are doing it for the first time or very happy here can stay here. If you'd like a little more challenge, you can walk one foot toward, more toward the middle and take the other foot up to the ceiling, pressing, lifting. And then you can put that foot that was up right next to the one that was down and switch. Breathing. Again, this is totally optional. And then once both feet are on the floor, you can move your feet to a, a comfortable distance apart again. Lowering down from the top down, pausing, releasing, and working your low belly. So hopefully you're feeling a delicious opening across your chest. Maybe if you've never done bridge pose before, you it, it's like this miracle from hunching forward so, so much. All right, so now, <coughs> excuse me, some of us are going to notch things down, and some of us are going to ratchet it up. So if you're going to do the restorative version, 
You're going to come up into your pose, take a block and place it underneath you, and then lower down onto the block. You don't want to have the block in your low back where your vertebra, the, the stack vertebra are on it. You want it to be the large bone of your sacrum that rests on the block. And you can move it around until it's comfortable for you. If you want to be a little higher, you can try coming up onto your toes and putting the tall side of the block with it on the lowest uh, setting of all, just relaxing down. Now, I have mentioned about ratcheting it up. If you are somebody, I should have said this before, sorry, if you're someone who practices full wheel, then you can play around with that. Now, in my work at the middle school, I'm so jealous. All the young kids, they just pop right up into their back bend, and they just look so happy there. So hopefully this is something that will be fun for the youngsters among us or for the people who are working hard on their back bends. So if you're going to do a back bend, I'm sure the little kids are already up in theirs. Others of us, you might take your hands where your fingertips are pointing toward your shoulders, and you're bringing your feet in, same as the bridge pose, pressing down into your low back just like before, and coming up just like in bridge. Full wheel. On the next inhale, you can just press up and come to the wheel pose. You can play around with coming forward toward your knees, moving back, straighten your knees a little bit, and breathe in the best you can here. Again, feeling lucky no matter what you're doing here, whether you're lying on the block with the lowest height or you're up in full wheel. Then you can take a nice big breath in, let it go. If you're in the uh, full wheel, the bridge pose or the um, back bend, to come out, lift your chin high, tucking it into your chest so that when you come down, you're not landing on the top that's on the floor. Sometime when you're exhaling, bring your knees into your chest. If you want, you can lift your forehead up too and feel a stretch all the way in your back. If your head was lifted up, let it relax back again. Again, moving ponytail out of the way if your head is resting on your ponytail. And then take your arms out to a T with your palms facing down. Allow your legs to drop to the right and let them go all the way to the floor, relaxing there. Feel the opening in your left side body. You can turn the opposite hand palm up, feeling a stretch about over your shoulder. Breathe in there. And then turn both palms down again. Use your core muscles to lift your legs off the floor, across. Breathe here. And when you're exhaling over the other side, letting your hand, your legs completely relax on the floor, and the hand that's away from your knees can face up again. Feel the stretch in your rib cage and your Pectoral muscle that goes across from your chest and attaches onto your upper arm. Yeah. And then again, both palms facing down so you can roll onto your back. Pausing there. So now if there's anything else you'd like to do, you can do that. If you're someone who practices shoulder stand, you can do that. Otherwise, you can try maybe happy baby, rolling side to side, or you can spend a little time so opening up your hips, if you didn't do it so much in the standing pose, whatever you need to complete your practice. And circle your fingers and your hands. And then we're going to do Shavasana. So if you do not have all the stuff and you want to just extend your legs out long, then you can do that. Feet slightly away from you or away from each other. Palms facing up, arms slightly away from your sides. And relaxing here again, making sure that your hair is not tipping your head in one way or the other. If you do have all your accessories, you're going to take a bean bag or some stacked pillows or something and place it underneath your legs. Grab something to cover you. If on your airplane pose earlier you went to some great beach location and you're using a beach towel to cover you now, maybe when you're lying in Shavasana, we can be working on imagining we're at some lovely warm place. You're going to lie down onto your back, something propping you up, something covering you, if you have all those things. Come under your covering or putting them underneath the covering. Let the next breath in be a big one and let it out through your mouth. Ah. So to begin the attention on it, you can do that. And let's for a moment 
once again come back to the theme of the luck of the Irish. So on St. Patrick's Day, they say that everyone is Irish. I had a friend in high school whose name is Poicky, and on St. Patrick's Day, she was O Poicky. So we're all Irish today, we're all lucky. Why are you lucky? Maybe you're practicing with someone you love and you can reach out and touch fingers, feeling that luck. Maybe you're feeling lucky because you actually know what it's like to fly on an airplane, for real, not just imagining in airplane pose. And maybe you've actually flown somewhere warm and wonderful where you used a fun beach towel and you got to lie on that beach towel on a soft sand beach and you felt your body sinking into the sand. Looking forward to a fun day. So you can look forward to a fun day here too and well. Notice your breath. Feel lucky. So we'll just lie here in the quiet for a little bit. If your thoughts start to get a little agitated, go back to the theme of why am I lucky? Or just find yourself on that beach towel again. And feel free to get on each box enough. Those of you who are actually Irish might recognize that as Danny Boy. Mm -hmm. 
let's start to come back. Back to our lucky lives. Fill out. Fill yourself up. And then pull yourself in. Give yourself a little hug. Roll to your side. Pause there before you come up to sit in. What I gave about posture, find a way to sit tall. Find a way to support your skull on your tall spine. And after the bridge poses, maybe you feel a new openness in your front. Maybe sit and breathe a couple of quiet breaths. You can place your hands at your heart. And hopefully something really good is happening in there. And there are so many people in the world right now who are not as lucky as we are. And I'd like to take the fruits of our time together today. Fill up your hands with all that goodness, all that luck. For the people in the house next to you. to the people in the countries next to us. We're all in this together. Thank you for being together with me today. Namaste. So I'm gonna leave the live stream open a little bit. Um, the, uh, the guy from Community Investors would like to have a chance for people to leave any comments here. Um, you can also go to the What's Up Wellesley Facebook page and leave comments there. I would love to be able to make this time um, as perfect for you as possible. So constructive criticism is really, really welcome. I would love to get some feedback because I don't have any, any way to gauge how this is going. So thank you for being with me again today. Happy St. Patrick's Day and may the luck of the Irish be with you. So while I leave the live stream open for any comments, I'll just check in with what's happening with the weather outside here. I'm seeing some questions that I guess I should be answering. Yes, I will be doing this each weekday morning, at least this week. It's now 1020 and um, I guess I will close the live stream. Again, if you have anything else you'd like to comment, you can also, if you're not in the What's Up Wellesley group, you can also go to my Facebook page, Personal Day Yoga, 
and leave any comments there. Thank you very much.